this is real hard. I think I need to pay a little more. Dude. I don't think I paid you enough. It's been a long journey, but we're here. Uh, I want to kind of acknowledge my, my lovely wife, Ama. My daughter who keeps telling me the end is near, so I should. <laughs> Greatest friend, Mr. Peabody. All right. Where do you start? I don't have a contrast, and Peabody will remember that. And uh, we work 24 hours. And uh, sometimes we got paid, a lot of times we didn't. And we just kept going. We'd, we'd go to start, go to Ryerson all day, and then go to Contrast in the afternoon, work throughout the night, writing, taking the photographs, Develop, back then developing the photographs at Ryerson la uh, Lab, and uh, coming back and propping them, and putting the paper together, and putting them to bed, make sure paper got out on time, and uh, all that. We we're gaining experience, and we we're very proud to do it, even though we didn't make any money. <laughs> you know, we didn't make it, we hardly made any money. And uh, we did, but we we're very proud Africans. Austin Clark. Woo! Yeah! Al Hamilton. Yeah. These are people. Yeah! I, I accept this for those people who are not here. Uh, the Eddie Grants who took the pictures. Yeah. You know, they're some heroes. Mr. Peabody's, who not only was a good writer, wrote about entertainment, but learned to use a camera and became so good that Toronto Star hired him to take pictures. Now a lot of people don't know that because everybody has a camera these days. And they take something called selfies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But before computers were invented, we were, we were doing the real work on the street. But, uh, you know, the, an award like that means a lot more when it's, it comes from your community. Because when I got on City TV and the community was invigorated, they just loved the work I was doing. They, they, they embraced me, they, they knew I was representing them. And that gave me the courage to keep on keeping on. Right. Because when the community supports you, then, then it, 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 it can break more, like, you can break more boundaries because the people that are in control cannot just easily get rid of you because they know you have an audience. <laughs> because you come with an audience. It's all about numbers. Uh, Planet Africa will tell you that. If you have the backing, if you have the support, if you have uh, people out there who tune in just to watch you, that's money. That's why we should support our own all the time. Yes. You know, because we can go and it's a bargaining chip. Just the black community is watching me. What I do means uh, uh, means something to them. So you know you cannot just get rid of me that easily. It's hard to get in, but once you get in, if you have the support of the community or your community, and even the larger community, because I mean I remember <coughs> Russians, Serbians coming up to me and says, "Well, you represent us. How can I, an African from Ghana represent us?" <laughs> <laughs> but I knew what it meant. That, the way I told my stories meant something to them. It made them feel they were included. Yes, my presence alone brought a lot of people in. And I felt that opportunity meant, like the wish says, responsibility. You have to represent and do it well. You have to look good, step up, be polished, speak well. Because you're not, you're not just in there for yourself. Right. You're representing a whole community. Kids are looking up to you. So that, I, I never felt that was a burden. I thought it was a political responsibility to stand out there and do a good job. 